Two. When the elevator door opened, no one was there. So I reached over and pushed the L button again and again and again and again. Because that's what you do when you want that door to close faster. Another one of those elevator rules. Come on, I huffed under my breath. Impatient, pissy, pissed off, scared, scarred, and straight up uncomfortable being crammed in this stupid steel box. This vertical coffin, another second. Uncle Mark chuckled. You would never survive in prison, nephew. Finally, the elevator door began closing. I exhaled, happy we were almost there. One floor to go. And just before it was shut, before the door clicked in place, four fingers slipped in, just barely catching it. The elevator door began opening again. Him. Sean. Stepped into the smoky box, wearing exactly what he wore the night before. Blue jeans, t-shirt, gold chain. But not his alive outfit. His dead one. The one that came with blood stains. Everybody was so happy to see him. Sean! Buck yelled reaching out for him. They slapped hands. Buck fiddled with the gold chain around Sean's neck, moved the clasp to the back. Sean looked at Danny. Look at you, he said, taking her hand, spinning her around. Uncle Mark gave him a light tap in the ribs. Big man, he said proudly. Sean turned, gave him a hug, caught a glimpse of our father. Pop, he said, natural, his face beaming. Our father wrapped his arms around Sean, cocooning him, then pulled away, shook hands like men, like partners. All the unalive, undead lined up along the wall, puffing their cigs, smiling, as Sean finally, finally faced me. When we were kids, I would follow Sean around the apartment, making the strangest noise with my mouth. Hard to explain the sound. Burpy, but not a burp like burp mixed with yawn, mixed with hum, something like that. For 20 minutes straight, from bedroom to kitchen to living room, back to the bedroom, to punish me, he would wait for me to finish, to run out of steam, to let it go, to get tired of being immature. And then, to my surprise, he wouldn't say a word to me for the rest of the day. I looked at Sean. He looked at me. Sean, I said. But he said nothing. I repeated, Sean, nothing. I stepped towards him, hugged him. He didn't hug back, just stood there, awkward, a middle drawer of a man. I asked him why he wouldn't say nothing, why he was ignoring me, but still nothing, not a word, not even a smile. I told him about the drawer, the gun, that I did like he told me like Buck told him, like our grandfather told our uncle, like our uncle told our dad. I followed the rules, at least the first two. I hadn't cried, I hadn't snitched. Explained that I was on my way to take care of his killer. Followed through with rule number three. Told him I knew it was Riggs. Told him I thought it was Riggs. Then I told him I knew it was Riggs again. Confessed that I was scared that I needed to know I was doing the right thing. The rules are the rules, right? Sean? I was breaking down. The tears were coming and I did what I could to hold them back. Took my eyes off Sean, hoping to fight the crying feeling by not looking. But everywhere else was everyone else. Cigarettes glowing like a bunch of L buttons. I looked back at Sean, tears now pouring from his eyes as he softly snotted and hiccuped like a little kid. Tears pouring from his eyes, tears pouring from his eyes, tears pouring from his eyes. I thought you said no crying, Sean, I said, voice cracking, one of my tears bursting free, but only one, so it didn't count. No crying, no crying, no crying, no crying. And even though his face was wet with tears, 
He wasn't supposed to cry when he was alive. I couldn't see him as anything less than my brother, my favorite, my only. And there was a sound, like whatever makes elevators work, cables and cogs or whatever, grinding, rubbing metal on metal, like a machine moaning, but coming from the mouth, from the belly of Sean. He never said nothing to me, just made that painful piercing sound as suddenly the elevator came to a stop. Random thought number five. The sound you hear in your head, the one people call ears ringing, sounds less like a bell and more like a flat line. There was a moment before the door opened when we all just stood there, thickening, smoke thickening, crowded in this cell, this coffin, this elevator, quiet. I looked around, only seeing the orange glow of five cigarettes puncturing the sheet of smoke like headlights and heavy fog. Only five cigarettes. Sean hadn't lit one, became invisible in the cloud. And I felt like the cigarette meant for him was burning in my stomach, filling me with a stinging fire. I want out. The door opened slowly, the cloud of smoke rushing out of the elevator, rushing out of me like an angry wave. I caught my breath as Buck, Danny, Uncle Mark, Pop, Frick, and Sean chased behind it. The L button no longer lit. I stood alone in the empty box, face tight from dried tears, jeans soggy, a loaded gun still tucked in my waistband. Sean turned back toward me, eyes dull from death, but shining from tears. Finally spoke to me, just two words, like a joke he'd been saving. You coming? <laughs>